Hello, very good evening. My name is Dr. Shan Bhatti, and in today's lecture, we will learn how you can design a very cool-looking website very quickly and from scratch using HTML and CSS. Make it responsive. Have it drop-down menus. Add famous icons, uh, famous font icons to it, and make it completely an image gallery type of website. Very cool and fun. So, for example, if you're here, uh, this is the website we will be using. Having drop-down menus with font or some icons on the menu icons with this icons and then we will convert it into a complete image gallery type of a website where you will have uh, headings and image gallery of your famous locations and you can change these images change these icons and use them and have them link as well so when you click on it another page displays with the particular information so to create this entire website we will be going through from a very scratch very basics all everything will be covered from css to html and making this website a complete responsive website so that as soon as you move it, the icons in the image basically change and update according to your preferences, okay? So how do we make it responsive? How do we create a drop-down menus? How do we add icons in your menus? Lots of things to cover. So let's get started. My name is Dr. Shan Baddi. If you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell icon so you receive the notification information regularly. Let's begin. In order to develop this website, let's start from the scratch again. And um, as usual, we create a new file in my brackets window. Uh, let me write HTML backslash HTML. Now, I will not go into very much details. Assumingly, you have watched my previous lectures. If you haven't, um, kindly watch my channel, subscribe it so that you follow these lectures very quickly and easily. So first, I go and save this folder and let me just save it in the drive that we've been using previously. Okay, and smiling and menu. And let me just name this as index.html. Okay, so now we have this page. Um, I create a head and I create body tags. Oops, body tags. Okay, and let me just get rid of it. So this is the standard code of, that we have been writing for every single page. Now in this case, let me give some title to this guy. And voila. So this is menu with uh, drop down and icons okay now what we do is we come into my body um, inside the body we basically create various different uh, components that are required to create this website now first thing we start with something called div tag or header let me use the header for the header aspect within this header let me give a div oops oopsie day zero okay div inside the div basically we can have h1 as this is this is my header or let's be more specific uh, let's visit oops 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 it is you do let's visit pakistan so here's my header this will uh, let's just make it as a tourist kind of application uh, Tour is fun, we'll try to put more places inside it. So I have my header available now inside this header. I will, after that, let me go into my navigation. Inside the navigation, what we do is we give a div that allows me to control the components in a better way. And then we create unordered list. Unordered list and inside the unordered list, we create the list items. Okay, let these list items be an anchor tag. A is equals to href is equals to bracket start bracket close hash and then, then close this a tag there we go okay i'll make this home so uh, what we did we create one link let me just copy this and paste and paste and paste and paste so now we have four different links available now i create for example home um, about us can be one page so i can give you this uh, about us or for example about pakistan okay about Pakistan, about PK, let me just use a short name for that. Uh, places, uh, for example, um, we can use restaurants or food in Pakistan. I can say um, A R C H I Archaeology, A, and then you can include as many links as you require in this. In fact, okay, so we have places to visit, food, archaeology, and what else can we do as PEO people and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have some of the links and contents available to us within this link. So if I click on the live view, 
it should give me some of the live view component here we go here we go so let's visit pakistan and i have few links available now we need to write an external css for this particular guy so create a new file control s save it okay so we have this location where we use this file so i go inside it and inside the menu and i say m e n u menu s t y l e style dot c s s okay so menu style dot c s s is there inside the head we go and let me create a link link relation needs to be um style sheet okay and the type t y p e type is equals to text slash c s s and h reference will have menu style dot css right and let me just do that so now what we did here is we linked our menu dot style css with my html okay so this is an external css example where we write css in an external file and we link it with our main file in order to do that we use this link tag uh, we need to specify some metadata data about this link tag so we provided the relation that the relation with uh, this html and this css is that is this a style sheet and the type or the content type in other words would be basically text based and css tag based so this this is like a predefined variable names that we specify this information is actually for the browser not for the user so as a user or the people who will view this thing will not be worried about it this we tell to the browser okay so now we come back into the menu and now we specify various different styles that we want to do so for example we specify style for my header so i can oops go inside the header and i can say my header should have oops my keyboard is right background color usually in this time i would like to give lgst light green okay that will do the trick and then maybe 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 uh font size can be for example 24 px this show the trick uh text align can be center that should do the trick also um and so on and so forth so you get the idea of what you want to do maybe color itself can be for example aquamarine oh no i don't like this uh this can be for example white smoke uh this can be fine so i did few changes here so let me just make move this guy here so we can see this better okay so let's visit pakistan and we have it available second thing we can do is we can go inside the body tag and we specify for example background image to be a url and this url can use images and inside images i have a back image already set up for me and here we go okay so what this basically means that i will have a background image for my complete website looks nice for the okay um what this will basically mean that i have a complete website already for set up for me now i don't like this colors that much so i can go and change this color so the light green can be for example i can remove this maybe uh, and now let's visit pakistan seems more apparent and text align why i uh, center that's okay maybe we can change this white color to some other color later on we will see that okay okay so we come back here and of some other thing that i like to do with my background when i said an image here is background size so back g r o u n d background and where's my size gone okay so let's just make size to cover so that the background image is actually covered with my particular image right um this just organizes the background image in a better way so the entire background is covered sometimes also we tend to use in this case the position as well and let's just make it to center so that image appears always at the center so now you can see that image is organized in a much better way even though screen size has been reduced so as soon as i if i adjust it my background would be betterly properly adjusted with my image so previously if i don't use that so let me just for example move it here um if i don't use these two things together control x see the image is not completely showing you clearly so it's almost cropped okay so these are some styles that we tend to use with this thing specifically when we are setting a background image like that so cover means that cover an entire image and then center means that uh, no matter what size you are getting show me the center image as well so this would automatically organize my uh, image to the center of my page will make sure that my website looks nice so the background image is actually clearly displayed here one other thing sometimes we do in certain cases is that before even any of these tags we use something called static dandan oops static dandan now this is um 
sometimes used, sometimes not even recommended, but uh, I found it to be helpful at a point. Okay, what basically this is, we are trying to set a global thing. So uh, zero pixel, zero pixel. Hang on. So what this basically means that static means everything. So every tag that uses will by default will have now zero padding, zero margin. And now we will set margin and padding manually for every single tag and specify it ourselves. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it creates a problem as well. Some people don't recommend it and everybody has its own aspects to it. But this, you will uh, come across this once you start working with um, different form of codes. Okay. So what we do, we set these values to this particular point. This will again mean everything is 0, 0. Every tag is set at 0, 0. And then we can set our content accordingly. Okay, so next thing now we do is we come inside our code and in here we had created a div. So let me just give it a class um, and, M -E and menu bar, I guess that should do the trick. Save it, come back in here and let me give menu bar class name and we specify a code here. Okay, in this case we will set the background okay, to an RGB value. Oops, see Daisy do. And this can be, for example, 0, 0, if I give 100. Okay. So what should be happening? Menu bar, background, RGB 100. And, oh, okay, sorry, dot menu bar. Okay. So dot menu bar would set a blue uh, color menu with 100. Now, RGB is, again, sometimes we use it. Sometimes we don't use it. People tend to refer. Sometimes we just give directly the color names like we did here. Um, but sometimes there is an RGB value, sometimes hexadecimal value. In my previous lectures, you would find I'm trying to use different things so that uh, as you go along and as you follow my lectures, you understand that there are different ways of doing it. So it's not only one way of doing it. You can use an RGB value and this stands for red, this stands for green, this stands for blue. And you can play with these values uh, to get whatever effect basically you want to create. For our sake, I just use a 100 value, which gives me a good strong blue color. And for that, which I actually required. Okay. Um, similarly, for example, if you need a green color, so if you set 100 and green, so now it's 100 of red, green and 100 of blue, which is basically a mixture. You can also give 100 of this thing as well, which makes it dark gray. So for now, we just set it to zero. Um, if I just remove this and set it to zero, I get a pure green. I can use green as well, but um, well, you get the idea basically what you need to do. So sometimes you just find the RGB value online as well for exact color mapping that you are basically going to create. Then the next thing we do is text align and I need to make sure that's also center. Sorry. So as soon as I said that the values are set here. One other thing that we did miss out is called box sizing. Now uh, I have one thing available somewhere around here. Um, here we go. Okay. Now CSS boxing is something that is uh, preferably done. Uh, in order to ensure your components are properly boxed. Okay, so uh, what basically does that? Uh, there are two forms of doing it. Uh, by default, when you set a width and height of any components, um, it does width plus padding plus border make, makes the actual sizing. Um, however, we tend to use um, this thing in a different way. So, it, W3 schools, if you follow it, it will give you more detail of what exactly box sizing is. So, what we do is we specify this box sizing on the body, and we tell it to be uh, in border boxed, okay. What this will basically mean that my uh, border box me of an element padding are included in the width and height. So whatever width and height we set basically will be included and it will ensure that my components are now organized in a better way or the sizing basically allows me to be very easily calculated if I make a sense, okay. Um, in other words, uh, whenever we set the boxing padding margins are all calculated. Um, but when you set it to border box uh, size on element, the padding and the border are included in the actual width and height of it. Okay, just like as it is shown. So it just makes the calculation little easy, depending on how basically you want to go about it. Okay, so uh, once we are set with this thing, so now basically we need to go dot uh, menu bar. Uh, and then inside the menu bar, we had unordered list. So we set the values for unordered list. Okay, now this unordered list display needs to be inline block so that the components currently are in this order, in the list order. Once you set it to inline block, they need to be ordered in a continuous line. And the list dash style, we need to remove that as well, set to none. So that the list style is set to none as well. 
M-E-N-U-Bar.U-L. I think if I'm all okay. Menu bar UL, yes. So it's not happening. My list and the color can be, for example, in my case, okay, let's use this thing, FFF. And if it's not refreshing or it's not applying. M-E-N-U bar UL, it's not applying. Why not applying? Okay, so it's not applying. Okay, let's just do one thing. Uh, let me change the display to inline flex. Ah, here we go. Now we get the flexible border appearing. Um, and then we can go inside it again and we can say dot menu bar. Inside the menu bar, there is an ordered list. On side, there is a list item. Okay, now this is one way of doing CSS um, multi structural multi layer that go inside a menu bar class. Inside menu bar class, there will be UL. Inside UL, there will be LI. So if I come back into my code, go inside the div of menu bar. Inside this div, you will find UL. Inside the UL, you will find list item. Okay. So inside the list item, now whatever is inside it will be applied on it. Then again, inside the list item, we have anchor tag. We will work with that later on. For current thing, we will just set its width to include, for example, 120 pixels. Usually that gives me a good value. And now you can see that the components are separated. Now, um, what we did here was with box sizing that I included it as a border box so that every component is measured with border. Now, when I set it to width 120, that's the actual width of each component, including the padding of that component as well. So it just makes few things to organize in a very easy manner. Okay, we can set the margins to again as a 15 pixels. So uh, this margin again means the component margin before and after that component. Because we have not used top, left, bottom, right, this margin would mean top, left, right and bottom. So all four are included for every single component. So for every single component, there is a 15, 15 pixels gap depending on how big or small you want the menu to appear. Okay, then we can also specify padding if you need a further uh, component. So now you can see these, these buttons are appearing to be more big and prominent with our own menu system. Okay, so once we are done with that, now we have an output, it's working very fine. Okay, one other thing we can do is if you look at it, this is sizing issue. So if I can take and move this box sizing, control X, save it and move it inside this global parameter. Okay, now you can see there's a shift in adjustments and the component look more appropriate this time. Okay, so if I adjust the page size, now it's adjusting more appropriately. Previously it wasn't. So um, what I did was I moved this box sizing from the body only to the whole steric, which means applies on the whole page. And this will give me a better way. If you want to check, I can control X here and move it back into the body. See this components is now completely different behavior. But once I save it again, Control X and move it to this point and the adjustment of all components is much better now um, and the components are placed in a better organization way. Okay, so basically it just makes the calculation easy and the components are aligned in a much better format. So uh, these are just like some of rules that we save and we tend to follow as we go along. Now um, after this still uh, the font of the color is not appropriate. So what we do is we say okay go inside the menu bar. Inside the menu bar there is an under unordered list. Oops dot menu bar inside the unordered list there is a list item inside the list item there is an anchor tag okay so menu bar ul lia we refer it to directly like that and then we said it okay once we have the menu bar the text decoration let's just get rid of this thing and it has to be none and the color can be anything in our case let me just use alice blue and now the content is more appropriately visible uh, to us Okay, then one thing is as I move my cursor, there's nothing happening here. So what I need to do is I need to move it again. So what I can do is I can select all of this, paste, colon, and I can use hover. Okay, and then I'll colon again. So what this basically means, oops, that menu bar, UL, list item, inside list item, there is an anchor, colon, hover is basically an action, an event that in or in case of this event, what should happen? So I can set that in case of this event, the background can be changed to, for example, any particular color. In this case, I have a value to be A and B0D. 
uh, and then border radius border dash radius radius can be set to for example 3 pixels or so and so forth okay once we do that and we come back here there's nothing happening I think this value is not recognizable here we go okay so you can see this we get a different color range now uh, that this button becomes green as soon as I move it obviously you can use it to any different color value for example I can make it uh, background dash C O L A R color or oh, sorry background I can make it an RGB value as well or I can say uh, dark blue so once I have it I get a dark blue which almost the same it's not visible let's just make it L I G H T light blue and now it should be more apparent okay now once we are done with that let's just move forward okay so now as we move here you can see that we have uh, our border color background color being changed however uh, what's happening it should be complete box however it's only covering the text area should not be there hmm okay one thing we can do is if I come into side index sometimes what we do is uh, as you see the home button this is the default page it should already be active so we come inside the links um, inside the a tag we specify class oops it is you do C L A W S class and is equals to quotation marks and let's just make it as active okay what this will do is it will ensure that your home class uh, the active is um, your home button is actually active okay so once I do that I come back here inside the menu where we had set the hover keys to be blue and before it I can place active comma dot active comma okay what this should include or what this should mean that this home should be active now and if I haven't changed it okay control s now it's okay so here we go so I just saved it now we set the home button as an active class we go back into the CSS in CSS where we wrote this hover code before it we also gave it active dot active comma dot menu now what this means that we need to have the same style set on two different things so instead of repeating the code or making it a code redundant we just use it as a multi class code if, uh, the, if it makes sense okay so by multi class code means that uh, the same code or the same style will be applied on active comma menu bar so on two different things menu bar with these this, this properties so the same code will be applied on two things which so is called a multi properties okay so or multi class properties so now I have an active code and I have an hover code so whoever whatever hover will have same code as well as whoever has the active class on it so this way uh, we will ensure that we I just need to change one property it's adopted on both things so once we've done that now again the problem is this is blue this should be highlighting a complete button um, okay let's just come here inside the anchor tag and let me just make it display block here we go something is happening and then maybe add a padding to it and I think 15 pixels ah that should do the trick here we go so now we have a buttons and everything working fine okay so see this again display blocks padding margins just play with these things these are the beauties of CSS that will create uh, the marvels for you um, and the margins and padding here I can reduce it from here to 10 or even to 5 so this should reduce the size to even further I can reduce this as 5 I think 10 is okay oops it is you do 15 is okay okay so now I have a large very nice buttons with a very nice uh, menu system going on for me okay perfect and control s so we have the buttons we have the menu systems now working for us now what we need to do is let's go further and add icons to these buttons that should be fun in order to add the icons we will need to move on to something called font awe som awesome icons so first thing is you move to the font awesome icons search it on google and you should be brought to this particular website that has these wonderful icons for us already um, there and we just need to use it in order to do that what we need to do is we need to have this 
font or some library linked to our code. That way we can access all these wonderful, beautiful icons without even writing a single code um, or in fact, just writing one line of code and without actually needing to download all these icons. Okay, So I don't need to download them, for include them. All I need to do is I just need to include one single line in my piece, in my code uh, to inherit uh, this font or some library. Let's do that. So in order to do that, we go inside my index and here we need to write that CDN code for my font awesome. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to come here and write font awesome bootstrap CDN. Okay, so if you write font awesome bootstrap CDN, you will be presented with this one main link. If I come inside this link, um, let me show you. Now we have this font awesome CSS bootstrap link. All you need to do is just click to copy. So if I select it, control C, come inside your code, inside your head tag, just after this code, paste it. Okay, but uh, this is just a URL. So in order to do that, what I do is I need to have this code. So first I will copy this entire link code and paste it here. And instead of my H reference, this file, now actually I need my HCSS code. So control X here and in place of my menu style CSS, I will paste it, this URL that I just copied. So we basically provided a link tag with a relation style sheet type CSS, same thing with H reference, but instead of now specifying my own file name, I actually have specified a path name. So what will happen now that every time I run this code, I have to be connected online. That's one thing. And assumingly we are creating a website, so it has to be online. So it will, I don't need to download anything. It will automatically go on this particular URL, find the CSS and apply it on my code wherever I'm using it. So this is a way, or this is a very quick way of applying an external library, specifically in this case, the bootstrap library. So I can download it myself as well. Okay, uh, I will show you in other videos that how you can download this library and include it as an uh, offline file. Uh, but in our case, we're just using it live. now. Once you're done it, now we come back into font library. And for example, I need to have these icons. Now, in order to use these icons, for example, the first one we can have is home. So if I search home, so if I type home, we get a home. If I click on home icon, we will get a small piece of code that will tell me that how I can use this icon. Okay. So now what I need to do is I just simply need to copy this i. This i tag is for icon with a class far far home, Arial hidden true and icon close. This is the code for showing me this particular icon. Okay. So I copy this, come back inside my home and after or before the home icon. Okay. This is where I want it. So before the home, I paste this code. Here we go. And maybe Arial hidden true. We don't need this. Sometimes we don't, don't use it. So I place this icon code at my code, press control S and just open it, my own file name. And now you should see this small icon here. If I refresh it, if I refresh it, if I refresh it, so right click, copy this, come back here or I come here and control V, save it, go back here. Let's see this works. Ah, this works. So I guess path ka issue Okay, so bootstrap ka CDN, um, so you need to have that ensure that you can use a correct particular path with it. Sometimes uh, this one didn't work for whatever reason, uh, this should have worked. But this part didn't work, so I searched for another bootstrap. I think this is a different URL and this time it worked. Okay, so anyway, so we get the bootstrap icons on our my icon. Similarly, we need icons on all these things. So what we do is we come back here and for my about, I can search and go back. And then you can use any of this information that you want to make available. Okay. So for example, in this case, we can say uh, about a b o u t about. Let's see if there's an about available. Uh, there's no about available. Uh, me, 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 me. I don't know. Um, C o u n t. All right. So country. I have a globe available. Let me use this globe. So I will use this country. Uh, uh. So it's as simple as this. You just copy this icon, paste it. And in this case, I real true hidden. I just don't need this. So I remove it. So if I save it, come back inside my code. And you can see this. I have an about icon available here. Okay. Similarly, I come back here. I go back and next I have places. So for places, I can use which icon we can use. So you can see there are so many icons that you can use. All you need to do is include one thing. Um, this link CDN and then just improve, import this icon here. So I can include places, places, with place icon here. 
Um, there was supposed to be one icon that I had in mind. Uh, P L A C E place uh, location map. Yes, I can use map. I guess this one was in my mind. So I could select this Control C, and before the places I placed here, I removed the aerial. Wonderful. Okay, food. I go back here. This one is easy. So I can have food, and there are many icons here for the food. But I will use cutlery. Okay, and then I can copy this code here and place it in front of food. And then I remove this aerial thing. Okay, archaeology. And then again, this can be um, places, um, locations, globe, buildings, I guess. B U I L D. Building. Here we go. So we have a building here. And I can use this code and then I can paste it here. I don't need this aerial true, I just remove it. People again, this should be plenty as well. P E O P users, this work fine for me. Control C and Control V. Let me get rid of this aerial. Okay, so now you can see this that if I re reduce the font size. Um, we have list icons, um, list, inside the list we have anchor tag. Inside the anchor tag we have placed an icon here which basically allows us to control the people. So this way we get an idea what's basically happening. So now if I come back here and you can see this, we have all these wonderful icons being used in our cases. Okay. Um, archaeology is in new line, I don't know why, should not happen. Let me see why this has happened. I think it's a little bit the size issue. Yeah, I think the size issue. So if we go inside the CSS, uh, there is supposed to be width somewhere. So let me just make it 130 pixels. Nope, 140. Now it's okay. So now archaeology is okay. So we just increase the width in my icons and now I've got archaeology as well. So as you can see, this, this becomes very perfectly manageable. Now, one thing we need to do is add some space between these icons. I don't like that much gap between here. So, uh, if I come inside the index, you can see that I can add one space just like that. Uh, and that should add one small space. But if you want to add more space, you can write a CSS for it. In order to write the CSS for this thing, what we need to do is we need to come back here. CSS here we need to write that dot menu menu bar inside menu bar there is called dot far now dot far basically is a class name that's already being used here so as you can see this class far is already there inside this there's a subclass far user so we are going to target this far so whoever has the far we will basically set its margin uh, dash left or right I think right can be tricked into giving for example 10 pixels let's see how it goes so now you can see this there's a space between all of these we can reduce this space to 5 pixels and there is a less space between them now keeping in mind archaeology so this can be 150 and now we go all that so you control the space as well from margin five how much you need for the, in this case i think this is looks good so we have a buttons available each button has its icon available as well. Now let's just go inside the code and add a further drop down menu inside each of these buttons. Now, in order to add the sub menu, let me just bring this code. Let me just make it, oops, a little bit bigger font so it's more legible. And come back here. So, for example, we have a home button that's okay, but inside this list item icon about. I need to add one more code. Okay, I need to make um, sub menus. So inside the about, I want to have a sub menus. So what I do is I take this list icon. After this a tag for this about, I press enter and increase its size. Right. So now there's some space here. Inside this list, I will need to add another div tag. Okay. So because we want to add a drop down menu inside about. So inside the about list item, we add a div, div tag. Inside this div tag, we will add the unordered list. Inside the unordered list, we will add that list item. 
inside that list item again we would add the h reference a tag okay and this can be for example about uh, pakistan about its provinces okay and then control c oops it is you do control v control v and i can say provinces about government or whatever we want to add g o v e r and m in government and for example about its um, economy uh, economy e c u n o m y i hope i spelled it correctly and then for example the education system and so on and so forth so as many links as you want to create now as soon as i save it you would see that underneath about we have these menus available so technically we got the menus working and i said oh, okay tick looks okay but that's exactly that's something that i don't want to do i want to make sure they are hidden and they appear when i click on this particular button for that i will create a class inside this div tick and i can say sub m e n u menu 1 Okay, so this becomes my sub menu one. So this is a class name, and now I need to control this class name with this particular sub menu. So after doing that, let's jump to the CSS. Inside the CSS, zinga, what I need to do is I need to add my code. Here inside this code, I will come back here and I will say dot sub m e n u menu one. You guys, you need to have display set to none. and what that should do is technically it should hide that menu about pk uh, that should be hidden that's because now this menu is gone okay so um, because we set the display to none now it should be displayed when actually my cursor moves over it so we need a hover event so for a hover event we would say that go inside the menu bar inside menu bar you have a an ordered list inside this there is a list item inside the list item there is a hover tag and that hover tag is triggered for sub m menu 1 okay so we have told it that in, there's a main menu bar because that's where the event needs to go ul list item inside list item hover hover means every list item that we are going to hover it will check whether i need to have a sub menu for that or not So I said okay because I can have some menus in other items as well. So in this case we said dot sub menu one. Okay, so when we hover any of the list items, find sub menu one. So wherever there is a sub menu one, what you need to do? You need to set its sorry not direction. Display set to block. Okay, uh, position p o s i position needs to be absolute. So it needs to have a fixed position. the background can be rgb with 0 comma 0 comma same 100 oops it is zero okay so i set it as the same background as this blue one uh, with sub menu having a disk block as a display and absolute value as a position so when i move over it now you can see this i have got a mo cursor it as soon as i move my cursor over it hides this menu is appearing now the problem is this menu is appearing like a inline menu you can have that you can have a multi row inline menu some websites have that if you need lots of menus with it in our case we do not require that so we need to change that with our css okay so um, in order to change that what we do is we uh, change the values but before we do that uh, let me just add a margin to it margin dash top i think should do the trick to 15 pixels or something like that so now i have a certain gap at the top area of this menu so it doesn't start right uh, from underneath this thing okay so one other thing margin let me left can also be for example 15 pixels once we are set with that now again if i come back here see this we have a little bit space from the left side as well Um, now, to, in order to move this downwards, what I need to do is let me just copy this entire code. Z, control C, Control V, and back it close. What I need to do is I need to show, tell it that inside the menu bar, list item. When the list hover occurs, find sub menu one. Inside find sub menu, there is again unordered list. Okay, inside this unordered list, what I want the display to occur as a block. and after that set the margin to 10 pixels 
Okay, so what this basically means that inside this sub menu one, the list item. So if I come back here, inside this sub menu one, now we are talking about this list item. So once you do that, now if I come back, see this, it's automatically occurring in a perfect order. Voila, wonderful, right? Beautiful. But you can see there's some space and alignment issues. We need to correct that. Again, you have this margins available, so you can play with these things as much as you like. So if I set to five, now it should occur as a five. Um, in fact, let me just set it to 10 and then we will see how margin left goes from the 10 and then let me add one more thing to it. So if I select this, paste it, um, in unordered list, the list item. Now I need to control each list item as well. Okay, so sub menu one, unordered list, list item. So inside sub menu one, there's a list, unordered list, so we control the unordered list, but now we need to control each element to control the each element, let me give its width, W I D T H width is equals to, for example, um, let's just set it to 150 pixels, almost same as this one. Okay, uh, so that should do one thing, then add a padding, uh, maybe 10 pixel, depends on how we gonna see in the end the results. I also need to add some border bottom, right? So I need to have a line at the bottom only. This can be one pixel line. I don't want it to be big. Um, let's make it just dotted or dashed can do the trick. And triple F would give us a nice white color. So if I come back here, you would note that I have a dotted line at the bottom. Okay, now the menu is looking more and more appropriate. At this time, after this thing, uh, let me just say that the background uh, can be, background can be trans P A R E N T parent. Okay, and then after transparency, let me just give border dash radius set to zero pixel. And okay, and then the text alignment, let me just make it to left. So now if I come back here, you would see this that my contents are should be aligned. So once I come back here, um, you can see that there's lots of spaces available between this. Uh, one thing I noted, oh, hang on, trans, T-R-A, T-R-A, N-S. So if I set this to zero also, so now there's not so much space between these two buttons. This, if I previously 10, so it had a huge buttons available and it's not working right, okay. So what I do is I set it to, I think zero, zero should do the trick. I don't want big buttons available, transparent is done. So now once I come back inside this menu, you will note that there's a line bit after the education okay, which we don't usually typically prefer. So it is a very cool trip to do that, trick to do that. So if I select this link again, come back here, menu, UL, LI, hover, sub menu one, list item one, list item one, action, last child. Now this is again another event that what I need to do after the last child, okay. So list item, last child. So when you find the last child, make the border, dash BOTM bottom that we specified as none. So what this should do is, this is another event that we called like hover, but this basically means the last child. So once there is a last child added, there is no underline after the education. Previously there was, right? So if I hide this, now after education there is underline. If you use this, now there's no underline. So it just makes things look more interesting. So similarly, if you need to add the same menu on other places, all you need to do is come inside the index tag, uh, and then we have this sub menu div available inside the about. So for example, in the places, I can come here inside its list item, I can add more tags. So for example, I can say Northern areas, I can add uh, SW80 Sawad, I can add for example, MUR Murray and all the famous places that I want, for example, uh, Gilgit, Baltistan, and so on and so forth. And I can add as many links as I want. And that should do the trick. For example, I can say, let's just go into Islamabad. And simil. Okay. And then I can come back here and, for example, Karachi. And so if I come inside the places now, see this links is all working. So it becomes as simple and easy to add the submenus as well if you want to add that in your particular website. Okay, so 
now uh, continuing from this point we have created the basic structure uh, let's just add few more components inside the main page body area so for that again we go inside our index page we had created the navigation navigation is complete you can add a um, what we call a carousel or a thumbnail image here uh, depends on basically what you want to do um, there's lots of code segments that are available um, in our case, I just want to create, this is a tourist website. So basically the idea is that once you come here, you get a bunch of images and icons. So, uh, and then you can select which details you want to read more about it. So um, what I do is inside, after this navigation, we come here, this time we add the section tag. Okay, so once we have this action tag inside these sections, um, we can add more articles. Uh, for our sake, what I need to do is I need to add more basically components here. So inside this section, I can say that, um, let's just start with the H2. Um, the, the place, in fact, let me just say this thing. Hmm. Usually we give a div. Inside a div, we have an H2. Okay, um, this can be the place, uh, the famous places the F A M O U S famous places in P A K I S T and Pakistan. Okay. So once we are here, we get the famous places in Pakistan and we will work with the padding and everything that we go along. Um, after this, let me just add what we call another div. Okay. Inside this div, we add, we need to now create a gallery kind of effect. For that gallery kind of effect, what we do is we uh, create this diff and this can be, for example, class is equal to res p o n s i responsive. Okay. So because now the main target is that we create a gallery kind of effect here for our tourist applications. Um, depends on how you want to add the components, but um, I want a gallery effect where there's lots of beautiful locations and we can click and visit those locations. But they had I have to be responsive. So that was our main target initially as well. So that responsive website uh, will have that responsive tag inside it. So inside this, let me create another div and this div, close this. This div class can be, for example, oh, oh CLA class is equals to the whole or that word. Class is equals to gallery. Okay. And once we have this gallery class, we create an A tag. Inside this A tag, we provide a, for example, H reference is equals to, uh, for now, let me just again use this dummy. Okay, and I close the A tag. Now we are using the A tag because um, inside this A tag, we will put an image and our entire gallery icon. So no matter where you click, basically it should take you to a particular location. So this will be SRC. Um, is equals to double quotation marks. I will provide the image name later on. Um, then um, let me just close it. Okay. So now we need to do, uh, we need to have few images available for our particular locations. Okay. Um, what we can do is uh, we can go inside this um, images images. In fact, we tend to use these beautiful, um, you can search for this thing, free images. And this is Pigs Bay. I tend to use this a lot. And if I can find Pakistan here, then we have some turn images of Pakistan available here. So you can take these images and you can use them. They are supposed to be free. So I select them and you can free download. The size is essential. Initially, I don't want them to be too big. So I will just use 640 by 480 and free download. It will download to me. I don't know where it downloaded. Uh, show in folder. So I don't want it to download here. So control X and go inside this folder. We have been saving our images here. And let me just rename it as LAKE Lake 1. Let's go back here. Maximize this. Um, so if I go back, so I need a couple of images that I can use. So I download one image here. Let me find second image of Pakistan. Uh, where I can say, for example, this one. Again, another beautiful image. So download. And I will just download 640 image. 
and it's also downloading so okay i think it's going on the default location let me find another location yeah that sounds fine download and it's also downloading let me go back so basically yes you need couple of locations and of images so let me just have them if you have many that would work fine but if you don't have um blum 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 i don't know where where, where let's hell valley side okay we will donate later so i've downloaded couple of images and i think they all are in the same folder so let me just go and bzz, you know show in folder and we had downloaded these 1 2 3 4 images let me just cut them and paste them in our images folder and let me just rename this as hell this can be lahore and this can be uh, lake lake 2 this can be as road road okay so we have couple of images that are available obviously when you developing a website you need to do a good extensive research and you can find all the code available um, obviously when you're doing research find your good images um, for your code so if i come back here uh, what i do is i have this image and i can now say that go inside the images inside image you have something called hell so use that hell image now one other thing that we sometimes tend to do is we need to specify the width and height so i can say width is equals to uh, this can be fixed for example 600 and h e r g h t height is equals to can be fixed at 400 so this should ensure that my images reside with a particular height and width sometimes with images also we tend to provide something called altered is equals to bracket star bracket close what alternate means alternate images so i can say um hill side image of p a k i s t m this is like the metadata data about your image so um, information about image if the image is not displayed somebody can use this uh, alternative tag to sub search about my particular image so what i did is i created an anchor tag inside anchor tag i provided an image this again has been encapsulated inside a div tag of a gallery so once this a image is closed i have a div that is being closed um this after this i think okay after this a tag let me provide one more div and uh, let me just close it and this div can have a for example uh, location name so i can have same thing hill side image image of pak pakistan okay let's just name this uh, give this a class as well and this can be for example description dscp okay um, image description that becomes more call it clear okay so i have gallery or in fact just leave it description let's just make it small so this is a piece of code that we do create for an image piece of image gallery now if i come back here and you can see this i have an image uh, which of 640 by 480 and there is a small text here it's a hill side image available i have one text available here as well so obviously not looking very nice but this is just pure html now what we need to do is we need to go back here go back into my css Okay so once we are in the css the first thing we do is we say okay um let me just give a comment um gallery style so i know that from this point forth i have a styles for my gallery okay so now um in order to set up this gallery first thing we do is we set say dev dot g a w l e r by gallery I think that was the name. So just ensuring class name G A W L E R Bagla Gallery. Yes. So div dot gallery bracket star bracket close. We need to set a div style for this particular entire gallery. For this thing, I will say there needs to be a border. It can be one pixel. It needs to be solid. And I can have a color. For example, um, C C C is considered as a light blue. I should do the trick. Okay, so I set a light blue color around this particular single gallery. Then uh, I go outside. I say div dot g a w l e r by gallery again. Again, now remember previously we have not been using tag names. In this case, these 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 these. But um, it's up to you. Sometimes we tend to use it. In this case, the first thing is I will say gallery image, 
that once I go inside the gallery, now what I should do with the image? So I can set the, oh, not W I T T H width, set it to be, for example, 100% semicolon and H E I G H T height can be questionable. Let me, for now, let it be auto. But no, it's not auto. Let's just set it to 200 pixels. Yeah, I think that's that's a big enough. Maybe 400, too big. I think 200 is okay. And we will come back to this point later on, okay? For now, I have set height width to 100% as well uh, because I want it to be responsive. So I want to ensure, and I will add two, three more gallery I concerted and we will adjust it later on. So for now, let it be 100%, but we will come back to this point later on. Okay, um, one thing we are also inside it, the div.descp description. Once we set to description, we want to, the padding of this description to be, for example, 15 pixels. So it's a little bit inwards. And then the color can be, for example, Alice Blue. We have been using this a lot. Text alignment can be centered to this particular block. That should do the trick. Okay. Um, once we are here, I think that's one thing. Maybe one other thing we do is sometimes is that uh, div dot g h w l gallery colon h o v e r hover. Now same concept. Um, sorry, hover means that when I hover the cursor over this, something should happen. So I can set for now border uh, to maybe one pixel and let it be solid or dotted d o t t e d dotted and let's just change the color to 777 so what this will you can see the dot color from solid it goes to dotted and light gray indicating your cursor is being selected okay so that's one thing okay so once this is done now i go back into index now obviously this is my card one so what i do is i Give it a comment, uh, question mark, dot, dot, and dot, dot, da, da. Sorry, exclamation mark, okay. Uh, I image, image, card. There we go. So just name it, name it image card and we copy this thing, making sure, yeah, that's there. Control C and go back. Control V and go back, Control V. So I copy pasted three times, four times, five times, four times, okay. So now we get an idea, okay, this is what's happening, same image is being repeated. So let me just say image slash lake one. Let's just make this as L-A-K-E lake two and slash this can be for example road save so now we have four different images available to us now how do we bring this side by side and make it look like more of a gallery kind of a behavior so we again go back into my css okay inside css we need to work with the first main thing is dot responsive -E responsive i think that's the correct spelling for responsive -E responsive so remember each div has a main tag called responsive tag. So we use this responsive tag and we come inside here and let me just say responsive. And then inside this responsive tag, we need to work with our code. So this is where actually it has to be a little bit responsive. So let me say the paddings can be um, zero to six pixels. Okay, so from left it has zero and top left, then we need to work with the float and float can be left left. Here we go, here we go. So now you start to see these two images floating to the left point. And then the width can, oh, not WIDTH. Okay, the width can be um, something that now we need to calculate. So for now, let me just use it 25%, okay, semicolon. So what this should mean is that if I come back here, now each has a 25%, 25, 25, 25, 25, and now you get to see a better 
for hillside formation created. And if I reduce the size, hopefully we will get something of a responsive attitude. But now typically it should mean that as soon as I go beyond a certain limit, these icons should jump down. Okay, That would make it pure responsive. So now if I have this, this is not going down in a particular manner, but you get the idea what's happening here. Okay. So now I like it. So this becomes now my content area, which is more appropriately being done. Um, at the same time, I can use, for example, H1. I don't know what this was. Uh, we have used div H2. Let me give it a class. Um, main subheading okay so once I go back into the CSS let me say h2 dot s u b h e a d i n g heading okay the color can be for example Alice blue I have been not Alice blue hmm. <laughs> okay let's just use Alice blue uh, background can be azure Nope. Um, L I G H T light blue. There we go. Okay, and font size can be 20 pixel, maybe 24 pixel. So now we have a subheading. Maybe I'll need to give a little bit padding to this guy as well 10 pixel in all around. So top left bottom can do the trick and maybe I need to have some margin uh, margin dash left can be 20 pixels so it, it just moves a little bit forward from here and let me do the prakam okay and then we can set the display to be block uh, that will do the trick. So subheading is done. Now we have the four images already done. Let's make this responsive. So in order to make it responsive, uh, there's a specific code that we need to write. And this code sometimes makes things more complicated and difficult. So what I do is I have it already copied and I will let me just paste it and I, let me explain this code for you. And we paste it uh, copy here. Okay. So this is a copy pasted code that I use now. What we do in this code is that we say the media only screen and maximum width you want it to be okay so uh, this is a css code obviously to make things more uh, responsive so we said the media only screen and maximum width to 700 pixels then this is the responsive code so this is my responsive tag class name so make that particular class width set to 49 percent margin to six percent and zero now so what should happen if your media screen size is reduced to a certain point then media only screen and maximum width 500 pixels make the responsive width 100%. So if the height is more than 700%, we reduce the height width size. In other words, this becomes my responsive side as well. Okay. So what this should do is it should create a, a reasonably uh, good effect with our content area. Okay. So now as soon as I move it down, you can see this. My images are now continuously in the responsive order. Okay. So if I move it down, here you go. So my images are now basically adjusting accordingly. So if there are four, I will limit two images. After a certain point, they come down as a single image site. Simply making my images very responsive. Obviously, we have not made the menus responsive yet. Should have done that as well. But we'll talk about that in a clear um, point next on. So here we go. Very simply, we have the components available. They are working. We have a hill site available. Uh, we can make the description uh, BSC cap background, oops, <sighs> color can be same light blue. So these background images also appear to be the same thing. Save it, go back into index and now I have my image cards available. What I can do is I can copy this diff. Where is my diff one? Here's the diff up till this point. Control C, Control V, and now we have second line. And we can make it, for example, um, the famous, the FAM of famous foods of PA Pakistan. Uh, similarly, I can copy after this div 
another control s and then make it for example famous a r c h i architecture a r c architecture in pakistan there we go so now you have multiple websites that has a very nice backgrounds and colors to it um this is something we can control h2 background color light blue i don't like it so we can remove it so it looks like this or we can give it for example light this thing nah uh, let's just make it transparent leave it transparent colon and and only none okay semicolon so we have a famous food places for pakistan now the front color can be anything you want and i think this should look better now damn okay so we have our website created for us with a certain background and the foregrounds having a content area and you can give whatever information you want to give in this thing finally the last thing component remains is after the section we give a footer area okay and then you can have any footer content area inside this so we give a div here and that div can have any uh, h2 h3 for example uh this is see your copy all right of ac at the academy uh and then we can have a paragraph for details please visit my youtube channel okay here we go so now we have a footer area that's available here and we can set various different styles for this footer as well in the same way we created here so hopefully this will thing make things a little bit more interesting for you um you can add five images six images if this are two word because initially we had a horizontal image so we have used it but now if you see um as soon as you depend on the screen size you get a very nice effect for your image gallery create more components with it the rearrange with it you can add a left side right side panel have two three images displayed have a one large image if displayed and you can change the color cell with it depending on how you basically want to do so thank you very much for watching